What's up humans? How's it hanging? I'm the Nerdy Beard and welcome back to World of Warplanes and today I'll be bringing you a video on the A6 M20, the tier 5 Japanese fighter. And for those of you who have watched my video on the A6 M1 at tier 4, you'll find that this aircraft is quite similar. Uh, it is very easy to shoot down, unfortunately, and I think that's going to be a trend for the rest of this tech tree. There really isn't a lot of armor and definitely not a hit points. The aircraft has only 40 more hit points, bringing it to a total of 180. And when you compare it to the Spitfire and the BF-109E and MiG-3, which is the aircraft that I've played so far, you're at you know, 20 points or so behind. And when you think about the P-40 at tier 5 for the American line, you're... 70 points behind so i had to do a quick add up in my head then but uh yeah so you're quite a ways behind in survivability so it makes this aircraft quite difficult to to know where to put it i think is the best term uh, i can think of it has some fantastic guns which we'll go through in a moment and it's very surprising the amount of damage that this aircraft can put out and very true for the tier 4 so that follows through from the tier 4 into the tier 5 but it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of an odd aircraft, and uh, we'll jump into the upgrades, which is uh, probably will help me describe what I mean here. So, you start off with the Tier 4 airframe, and the only word that I can associate with that airframe is rubbish. Unfortunately, you are going to have a tough time when you start grinding this aircraft, but thankfully... It's not too expensive to get to the next airframe, and you come with a good set of guns. You've got two 20mm cannons and two 7.7mm machine guns, and those machine guns are very good. They can definitely finish off either a light-skinned aircraft or the heavy targets that you're firing at quite quickly. So you don't need to worry as much when you're firing these guns, when you're firing those cannons specifically. Um, you do get a few more shots than you would say on the Spitfire out of them, and definitely a few more than the, uh, the German aircraft. But those 7.7mm machine guns definitely pick up the slack when your fire rate decreases due to heat. And the two engine upgrades there, well, it's, you know, tier 4, 5, and then to a tier 6 engine. So pretty self-explanatory. You want to get those straight away. But I left those to last because the maneuverability of this aircraft is absolutely phenomenal. It takes almost no time to get this aircraft turned on 180 degrees, and its uh, ability to pull up and go into a dive is also fantastic. So your ability to evade incoming fire is very good, and while if you're caught with an enemy on your tail, your best option is probably just to bail and, and get out of the fight. Um, yeah, you're probably going to go down in flames very quickly, so don't worry, you're probably going to be spending a lot of time in the respawn menu until this aircraft is upgraded, and even then, I'm still spending quite a bit of time in the respawn. Um, just, just the nature of the aircraft, really. Uh, you're going to be shot down, and when people see this aircraft, they identify it as a massive threat, because if it gets behind them, this aircraft, 9 out of 10 times, is going to win that engagement. Um, so yeah, that's that's what uh, the progression that I use there, so airframe, then the cannons, and then the engines, and that worked out fairly well for me. It wasn't much of a struggle once I started to get uh, things moving through this upgrade here. And into the service, no real surprises. Uh, universal ammunition, because why not? Um, got the manual fire extinguisher, and I've changed out the pneumatic restarter in this aircraft for the first aid dressing. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the, in the video on the Tier 4, but in the Tier 5 it is very evident. This pilot in this aircraft, he gets hurt a lot, much more than your engine gets damaged. So I've chosen to go the first aid dressing to get the pilot back in to keep that maneuverability stat very high. Um, the, yeah, the control surfaces, so your wings and your tail, if they go or your engine goes and you're on fire, then you just don't have enough hit points left really. You may as well just stick at it until either you manage to escape the engagement and your uh, air, your wings and your engine repair themselves, or you're gonna go down and you get a new aircraft anyway. So uh, in order to keep the aircraft in the maneuverability game as much as possible, and maybe even do a little bit more damage before you uh, get shot down, I've gone with the first aid dressing package. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for for that on uh, the service and upgrades. Just a quick spin around, and it looks very similar to the Tier 4, the A6M1. Obviously, only being one letter difference in the model, just an upgraded version. But uh, yeah, it is it is a reasonably good looking plane, and I quite like uh, looking at it as I spin across the screen. Uh, alrighty, guys, so I'm going to jump into a battle, and I will catch you in a second. Alrighty, and here we are 
in game and we're in the archipelago map and it's an all tier 5 game so very even and hopefully we can have a more successful attempt at uh, showing off this aircraft in the tier 4 video I think I spent uh, more time waiting to respawn than I did actually flying the aircraft so yeah let's see how the tier 5 goes alrighty so as usual going to the sectors that have more fighters than anything else and getting the boost in there. So you see quite a good boost. It's only six seconds, five seconds, whichever it was there. Um, it's just this aircraft, like the Tier 4, it gets out of its comfort zone very quickly. You saw there, spawning in it just over a kilometre off the ground. It really didn't like it. All right, let's let's uh, let's see if we can get some damage done here. All right, good start. And you see those cannons are brutal, just like the Tier 4. Probably even more so in this regard. So let's get after him, get a little closer. Alright, and we set a fire. Very good, okay. And finished off, and a good start. Alright, excellent. And another one lined up. Oh, we got an enemy on our tail. Hopefully that's not one of the heavy guys. Alright, third kill. Grade 1 fighter secured. Oh, a bit of damage coming my way. But not too bad. Only took 8 points of damage there. And got the 3 kills, so very good start. Happy with that. Okay, so yeah, as I was uh, talking about there, as with the Tier 4, if you've seen that video, this aircraft has quite a, a small range of comfortable areas and I might just follow my team instead of going by myself while I'm uh, chatting to you um, yeah so it doesn't like being very high so you want to make sure that you're you're uh, fighting the enemy at around about sort of the 750 to 550 sort of height that's where I'm very comfortable at and that's where I like to sit any lower than that and you become a risk of getting swapped on by the heavy stuff when it dives down um, and if you uh, you get caught out in those low areas it's very hard for you to gain an advantage and get back up into the high areas uh, to take advantage of an enemy that's below you so you kind of get stuck down there and it makes it very difficult uh, so let me just see if I can get underneath this guy and do a bit of damage if he wants to come after me I'm in big trouble all right excellent so we got there do a little bit of damage before we stall Unless he helps me out and comes down again. Alright, so my weapons have overheated. So we did a little bit of damage. And we should be able to get a few more hits into him. Hopefully. And get a little closer. Ooh, accuracy isn't all that good. Nah, okay, time to go. No more of that. Oh, maybe we can get this guy. Um, okay, yeah, so um, yeah, get up, get up to about that 500 to 750 sort of height. I think that's that's a good height for, for this aircraft, certainly, and, and it allows you to do things like this. So even though I got a little higher than I, I should have there, I uh, wasn't really listening to my own advice, um, it did actually afford me an opportunity here to look down and to get stuck into this guy here. So you can, you can certainly do that at about 700 metres off the ground. It gives you plenty of time to line up and then... Just slow yourself down just a tad, and you see the performance of this aircraft is excellent. It slowed right down there. It didn't take very long at all, and you know, uh, aircraft like the P-40, for example, a big heavy thing, takes a long time to slow it down, and you do miss a lot of opportunity to get in behind these slower aircraft and uh, take them out quickly. And definitely, it suits this aircraft to do things quickly. You do not want to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere by yourself with a couple of fighters coming in behind you. Okay, so I'm just after this IL-2 while I'm just keeping an eye on what's happening over here. Now, they're gonna, probably going to come down on my head. So, yeah, it might be time to get out of here. A lot more in this aircraft than others. I will be cautious about how I approach some situations. In the, say, the Spitfire, you can kind of get away with it. Um, people try to avoid you a little bit, I find, because they see, oh, Spitfire, and they get a little... Concerned. All right, let's see if these cannons can do some work. Look at that. Excellent, excellent work. Didn't take a lot of damage and really put the hurt on this guy. And, uh, yeah, happy with that. So, yeah, as I was saying, this bit fire, you can you kind of get away with hanging around and not, uh, not being too mindful of, of where you are based on incoming enemy. But, uh, yeah, in this aircraft, you really don't want to be caught out and you don't want to be in a straight line, like I mentioned, for too long. Alright, so going well so far. Oh, and the aircraft's on fire. And what's after me? So that, that sounded kind of big. Where is it? Oh, okay, yep. So that guy's after me. And you saw those hit points. They just got shredded. Oh, dear. Well, yeah, like I said, you get that. Oh, this is surrounded by heavy stuff at the moment. <laughs> it's really not a good place to be. Um, okay, maybe we, can, maybe we can help get rid of this guy. Hopefully... Let's go. Let's go, cannons. 
Oh yeah, did a little bit of damage, and he's probably just going to be out of range pretty soon. Let's uh, let's see what he does. So there's not a lot of enemy around, but we're almost over the airfield now. So if this uh, P-38F disengages, then we can drop down and start taking out this defense aircraft and put a little bit of pressure on this opposition team. So it's two sectors all, so we're not scoring at a blistering rate, either of us. But let's see if we can do something about it. So my hit points there, if you can see, have regenerated a little bit after getting flogged. And let's see, we can show off, look at this maneuverability. So we're pulling up, which is probably the slowest of all the maneuvers you could do, and still right up and right behind this aircraft. So awesome, awesome maneuverability. And something's after me. Got a boot, oh, no, time to go, time to go. Ah, uh, just, just the silly AI. So don't want to underestimate it, but certainly, all right, he's out of here. Let's show it, look at that turn. Beautiful turning, that. And uh, let's have ourselves a boomerang. All right, excellent. There's another one. And where's that guy? Nope. Oh, he's gone straight past me. So he's missed his opportunity to take me out, which means I need to take him out. Let's see how we go. Oh, come on, guns. Come on, guns. You can do it. You can do it. Yes. All right, excellent. Oh, was he on low health? Yes, he is. All right, man. Oh, damn, almost. And we got the point. All right, fantastic. So now let's uh, not do anything silly. And oh, oh, oh. And I think we might have just about had it. Oh, 12 points. So hit the dive and boost to get under this big guy. Use that turn. Oh, look at that wing. <laughs> Use that turn. And let's see if we can get up underneath him and uh, show him some of his own medicine. Because that's twice now that he's strafed me and I've only just survived. All right, almost in range. Come on, cannons. Let's do this. Doing a bit of damage. Oh, bit of a wobbly approach. Uh, he's just got out of range. But I think... Oh, damn stall. <laughs> All right, okay, so those cannons, very effective. Oh, I lost my wing again, but uh, yeah, I really hope you can see here, guys, um, if it's translating properly through into the video for you, just how quickly this aircraft turns. It's, it's like it's being spun off a pole that's through the middle of it. It just, you know, does, it just seems to not even make sense sometimes how well this aircraft can spin around on the horizontal axis. And you saw the dive and you saw the climb from just before as well. So uh, it makes it a very versatile aircraft, and you can see we're up to just short of five and a half thousand. Ah, sorry, five, <laughs> five, yeah, five and a half thousand. Sorry, words. Yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> so for just short of five and a half thousand combat points, and we've got two chevrons. So we're definitely in and amongst it, doing what we're supposed to be doing. And let's see, a little bit more damage coming in, which is good. My boost should be recharged fairly soon, and I'm not really taking my own advice here. I am sitting in a silly position but I really just want this kill up oh, doesn't matter and we've got the victory alrighty well that wasn't too bad we uh, had a very solid team there and once we got that uh, airfield down the bottom it was all easy pickings from there alrighty guys I'm going to jump back into the hangar so I will see you in a sec alrighty and we're back so uh, not a huge amount of medals but very happy to get the win. So we've got the Flying Warrior badge. We have uh, one rank and two chevrons. So grade four fighter. Well, which means that we were definitely on the way to, to fulfilling the requirements of this aircraft for this battle. 26,200 credits, uh, 1,500 experience. Uh, that was including the times two for the day. And we've got 76 free experience out of that. So not too bad. And uh, you didn't get any kills defending, because uh, I just kind of felt like I was chasing everybody on that map. So, um, yeah, not, not a lot of that uh, high-speed dogfighting to be shown in that one. There's a lot of space between uh, the enemy team and myself. But eight kills still, one assist, and two sectors captured, with 220 capture points earned. So, yeah, very happy with that. And I did get an opportunity to show you the turns, to show you how brittle this aircraft can be as well. One strafe, even though it was from a heavy fighter... One strafe had me in a lot of panic. <laughs> I was probably talking a lot of rubbish very quickly, uh, just uh, trying to get out of the way of that heavy aircraft. But the advantage then of that, that really high maneuverability score of this aircraft meant I can get down, pull up, and almost every single time end up still within cannon range, almost directly underneath that uh, heavy fighter, which then I can start returning the punishment that he dished out upon me. And a lot of times, once you get behind them and stay low, you're going to get those heavy guys out with those good cannons and the machine guns. 
So 6,700 combat points in an overall fairly low scoring game. So it was definitely on par with just about everybody. And you can see the difference between the two teams here. Just a few more aircraft getting the combat points. And once we captured that second airbase, making it three points to one, it was pretty much over. Then the other team sort of run out of puff. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I got, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe as well. I'll be bringing lots more World of Warplanes content uh, to the channel. And hopefully soon, when we get closer into the Christmas break, there will be a few more games coming as well. Any tips and tricks, you guys? Or if you just want to have a chat about this aircraft or any other aircraft in the game, please leave a comment down below. I'll be really excited and happy to have a good discussion about any of the aircraft you play and any of the, the different things you do, whether it's equipment or any of the service items or whether you actually put uh, proper expensive equipment on the aircraft and the performance differences. Alrighty guys, that's it from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'm the Nerdy Beard. Take it easy.